Well, last week we mentioned Bloomington's huge win versus the Danbury Panthers at home. And last week, running back Aiden Gardner went off. He had two touchdowns in total. But this week, they're on the road versus Latonia. And Latonia, they're heading into this game very angry because they got destroyed by Ganado last week, 84-3. to While Bloomington, they got some confidence and some excitement again. This is going to be a huge game in district play because Petonia is 1-4 this season and Bloomington is 2-3. And, and both of these teams trying to get a statement win this Friday night. And for running back Aiden Gardner and offensive lineman Marquise Dilworth, they're just ready for the challenge. To be honest, pretty excited. We just got to execute and fix things that we messed up on last week. We're very excited. Uh, we've been working really hard for this moment. And I feel like if we can constantly work, keep on being coachable and disciplined, we'll be fine. Both Aiden and Marquise are hoping to keep making history for the Bobcats this Friday versus Flatonia. Now, even though Bloomington will look to get back-to-back -back games this season, we have some other teams that are hoping to get big-time players as well to step up. And I asked this question earlier, who's going to have a big breakout performance here in Week 6? And here's what I chose for our options. Quarrel wide receiver Walker Dietz, St. Joseph Flyers quarterback Aiden Aragon, Refereos quarterback Keelan Brown, and then Victoria West running back Genesis Jeffries. And right now, majority is going for Aiden Aragon for the St. Joseph Flyers right now. Jeffries there is in second. We'll see if anything changes going into the 10 o'clock show. Now, I just mentioned their quarterback Aiden Aragon for the Flyers, but they also had success from the running back as well, Dedrick Callis. He's been a big part of the Flyers this season. I had a chance to talk with him earlier to see how he's felt for the first couple weeks of the season and what he's looking forward to the rest of the way. We developed throughout the weeks, and so when we came out week three, I mean, we, had a, we came out pretty strong, and so I just felt good about that week. And so, like, from there to now, I feel like we improved a lot. Callis and the Flyers hope they're trying to get back-to-back -back wins. They go to Houston area to play for a CD Catholic. And again, Houston, that'll be Friday night at 7 p.m. Now from some volleyball to some district uh, football to volleyball, pardon me, last night happened between Industrial and again, Hallettsville. The first set was back and forth, but the Cobras, they do just enough to pull away in set number one. However, though, in the second set, the Hallettsville ladies showed a bit of resilience and they pulled out the set two win, even even up the match, but however, I just be the only one they would win. Industrial defends home court last night, and they take the match in four sets. And for Industrial, they're trying to keep improving. Again, for the Bramas, they look to bounce back against Yoakum this Friday. And Industrial, they get tight haven, just like the football team, again, this Friday as well. And then finally tonight, if you're a Houston Astros fan, you better cover your eyes because this was a tough one today. They got eliminated earlier by the Detroit Tigers, losing 5-2. to two. The game was scoreless until the sixth inning when Parker Meadows for the Tigers homered to right field. They would get up one to nothing in the game. And the Astros, they would respond. Josh Singleton, Jose Altuve, they brought two runs in to help the Astros, but it wasn't enough. The pinch hitter, Andy Abanez, had a three RBI double in the eighth inning. That would be enough for the Tigers to win and a tough one there for the Astros. And Don, that is the end of the season there for the Astros. I mean, there's going to be a lot of talk going into the